The world got the tragic news that the beautiful top model Gail O'Neill suddenly passed away on Tuesday, October 10th at only 61. Still so young and vibrant, many was taken aback by the news. Her family has still been quiet and respecting of her privacy, but it is believed that Gail O'Neill was battling an illness, we're not sure what it was. And in addition to her sister Denise, O'Neill is survived by her husband Paul Vieira, her mother Elaine, and her brother Randy. This video is to celebrate her wonderful career, activism, and life. Many of this generation didn't really know too much about this stunning beauty. While many talk of the 90s supermodel bombshells, I would love to highlight Gail as one of those models who was just jaw-droppingly gorgeous. She was one of the most beautiful women in the world to me and very quiet about her life and didn't desire too much attention. Please leave a dove or a white heart in the comments for her. We are going to do a full model profile for her, dissecting her childhood, career, beauty, and so much more. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Cream Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Once upon a time in the glitzy world of fashion, there was a queen who ruled the runway. This queen, a black beauty who redefined elegance, was none other than our own fashion diva. Her face graced the covers of top tier fashion magazines and she was a dazzling star in the much hyped Sport Illustrated swimsuit issue. If you're part of the younger crowd, you might recognize her as the charismatic correspondent from CBS, The Early Show, and later on CNN and HGTV. In the year 2000, she decided to call Atlanta her home, quickly becoming a celebrated local journalist. Fast forward to 2014, she leapt into the world of arts and culture, joining Arts ATL as their editor at large. She didn't stop there. She also lent her voice to NPR affiliate WAVE and hosted and co-produced the video series Collective Knowledge on the A Network. Born to Jamaican parents in the suburbs of New York City in February 6, 1962 in Westchester County, New York, she didn't dream of a life in front of the camera. In her words, during a 2013 American Museum of Natural History interview, by the time I was 11 or 12 years old, I was convinced that my tall skinny frame was some kind of a cosmic joke with me the punchline end quote she also used to compare herself to a giraffe focusing on family and academics she attended wesleyan university she began her career in marketing and sales at xerox when destiny came knocking while on a business trip she caught the eye of photographer and stylist power couple chuck and martha baker they were so taken by her that they immediately called francis grill founder of click models about this great girl Within a year, she was the cover girl for the March 1986 issue of British Vogue. Stephanie Grill, Francis' daughter, and her longtime agent couldn't stop raving about her. People just loved her, she said. She was a major beauty with this beautiful personality, so authentic and kind, and she really had so much integrity. Before the era of supermodels like Campbell, she was shattering glass ceilings. She did it all, and at the time when it was difficult to get black girls on anything, Grill said. At the height of her career, she seamlessly transitioned between advertising campaigns, runways, and high fashion shoots. She was a cover star for British Vogue, Italian Vogue, American Vogue, Mademoiselle, Elle, and Glamour. Her grace and style were captured by iconic photographers like Steven Meisel, Annie Lebovitz, Albert Watson, Arthur Elgort, Patrick de Machalier, Jill Ben Simon, and Fabrizio Ferri. She modeled for top notch designers like Ralph Lauren, Donna Caron, Michael Kors, Willie Smith. Perry Ellis and Calvin Klein. Truly, she was a queen of the fashion world. She was everywhere in the 80s and 90s. Her luscious hair and sun-kissed skin was very sought after. Her mysterious aura and deep eyes intrigued many. It's a shame there isn't anything anywhere detailing her beauty secrets because I mean, wow, she was truly stunning. All we know is that she aged very gracefully, never having gotten any surgeries or procedures, and she was an omnivore. She obviously kept herself up physically and maintained her physique from 
from her youth and what made her the most charming was really her aura. At a time where models were known for scandals and revealing way too much about themselves, she was quiet and out of the way and focused on things outside of herself. She contributed to society and didn't lead with her beauty. Her beauty was not a priority. It's something about a woman that knows she is gorgeous but isn't phased by it, right? That was her and it seems no one has any scandalous story to reveal or anything bad to really say about her. All her peers are heartbroken by her sudden passing and only speak about how charming and kind she was. I saw Cynthia on Bailey, which I did a video for, and many others also doing tributes for her, which was very nice. And no one really had anything negative to say about her. She was just, she seemed like this light that everyone just seemed to love to be around, who just kept herself very private. There isn't, like I said, there isn't much about her beauty secret, but we can do a style analysis from her just based from what I saw. Of course, she was a model, so clothes really laid on her like a mannequin, right? And she had the sleek slender. It's a shame that she, you know, used to compare herself to a giraffe. I believe her sister also is in the modeling world, very beautiful. She just had a build for the outfits, very elegant, and everything just came naturally for her. If you look at her photos, she's not too posy or doing anything extra. She would just get in front of the camera and just look like she's just being herself, and then it would be art, right? Her features to me are very nice, bone structure. In terms of her fashion sense in her older age she still had that chic very classy fashion sense you know not too much accessories or too much patterns just very chic very subtle she would wear like you know a simple turtleneck with like some trousers and stuff like that pants and very elegant to still and she still kept herself up makeup very minimal makeup even older she wouldn't you wouldn't be seeing her with too much colorful makeup or anything like that very natural and in her older years you saw more of her fresh and just her natural beauty and I love that with her that she's still very recognizable her face was still moving <laughs> but you still can recognize her she just still looked like herself and carried herself in such a very respectable way so imagine a model was not just about the glitz and glamour right but one who stood up for what she believed in she was a dazzling beauty who refused to pose for, for cigarette ads or lend her image to companies that supported South Africa's unjust policies during the time of apartheid and she was all about principles. There was just some ads she just didn't want to do if she knew it was going to be harmful to the black community or people of color. She didn't want to participate in it or be used in it, right? And you remember the 1992 Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue? She was a radiant beauty who stole the show, but there was so much more to her than just her modeling career. In the 90s, she took on a new role, an advocate for the homeless, joined by around 20 of the world's top black models. She became part of the Black Girls Code coalition and this group founded by the legendary Iman which I did a video for and Bethan Hardison in 1988 was where she really shined. People couldn't get enough of her. They would book her again and again drawn in by her stunning looks and even more beautiful personality. She was genuine, kind, and overflowing with integrity according to Grill who spoke to WWD about her and you know what else was cool about her? She was always on time and super professional according to any photographer or designers that worked with her. She took her work very seriously and did not like to waste people's time. But she didn't brag about her amazing career. Instead, she loved to chat about all the other things she was passionate about. For her, modeling was just a job. She was the type of person who would always drop by to say hi and do something nice for others according to her friends. She had a way with words and didn't put on airs. She looked at the world with an open heart, not just focusing on herself. In a 2013 interview with the American Museum of Natural History, she shared some pretty deep thoughts. She said that as kids, we see the real beauty in things because we haven't been influenced by the world yet. But as we grow older and start to believe what the media tells us about beauty, we start finding faults in ourselves and in others. Mm. Now, isn't that something to think about? In the bustling world of journalism, O'Neill was a one-woman show, dipping her toes into every broadcasting platform you could imagine. You might remember her from the days when CBS, the early show, first hit the airwaves in 1999. There she was every Monday, brightening up our mornings with her segment, Box Office Plus. Unlike other movie reporters who were all about the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, O'Neill had a different approach. She didn't just cheer on the movie industry, she questioned it, making her quite the unique bird 
Bird and the Flock of the Entertainment Journalist. After her stint at CBS, she took us on, on a journey around the globe as the host of CNN's weekly series, Travel Now, but that wasn't all. She also reported on other events for CNN, proving to us that there really was no stopping her. Fast forward to 2004, and we found her on HGTV's mission organization, playing matchmaker between professional organizers and cluttered homes in need of a makeover. It was like watching a fairy godmother wave her magic wand, transforming chaotic spaces into havens of serenity. And in 2005, she got an invitation of a lifetime to host the White House Christmas for HGTV. She chatted up First Lady Laura Bush about all things festive, from twinkling decorations to the season's themes. By 2008, O'Neill found herself in the midst of an important conversation about diversity in the fashion world. Major magazines like Ebony and Italian Vogue were looking back at the industry's track record with black models. And guess who was right there in the mix? O'Neill. Photographed by the legendary Steven Meisel for Vogue Italia's groundbreaking A Black Issue. Even with her successful transition into journalism, O'Neill never lost her love for the runway. In 2009, she graced us with her presence in the spring-summer Calvin Klein CK1 fragrance campaign. And just like that, she showed us that she could do it all. Model, journalist, host, and an unstoppable force in the world of media. The lively and lovely Gail O'Neill shared her life with her husband, a man named Paul Vieira. I could not find any photos anywhere. She really led a very private life like I stated and couldn't even find any baby photos okay now Paul wasn't just any regular guy he was a big shot he is a big shot businessman and if you've ever played a video game you might have heard of a company called take two interactive software Inc it's a big deal in the gaming world based in the heart of New York City well Paul was a part of this gaming giant and since May 2018 he's been serving as a director of their audit committee now here comes a bit of a mystery in all of Gail's 61 years no one has heard a peep about her being a mom. There's no baby pictures, no stories about sleepless nights or first steps. It's like she had an invisible cloak when it came to her motherhood status and just life in general, right? Of course, it's possible that she did have kids but chose to keep that part of her life hush-hush. And after all, everyone has a right to their secrets, right? But we don't know if she has any kids, okay? And she, like I said, still kept her life very, very private, all right? And I hope it stays that way. I know a lot of times when icons die, families want to come out the woodworks, spill the beans write books but she seemed like she cultivated a life around her where people genuinely cared about her and loved her and that's not the kind of vibe with her and I hope it stays that way and may we never forget her and her legacy I'm gonna leave a little tribute for you guys to enjoy some stunning photos of her comment below a dove or a heart and comment also below who else would you guys like to see I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time